Hello my bookworms, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney. This might come at a surprise to you, but today's video is a book haul. And now if you're wondering, Sydney, but you just unhauled over 215 books. It's like, yes, I did. I have space now and it was my birthday. So these might be excuses, but we're gonna celebrate anyways with some books. <laughs> some of these books that we're gonna talk about today are presents from friends, patrons, family members, and myself. <laughs> and I'm really excited about, oop, there's three that are over here that need to be talked about. If you saw them on the shelf, no, you didn't. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> Very first, these were two presents from my friend Darian. She also has a YouTube channel, I'll link down below, and I can't handle her. <laughs> she got me the beautiful like painted edition of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I didn't know that it was raised. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. It has gold gilded edges. The chapter headers have a little lightning bolt on them. Wow, this is even better in person. And there's some larger like illustrated pages as well. Wow, this is so beautiful. The world to me was a secret which I desired to divine. And I feel like I don't want to get rid of this thing, this little sleeve that goes on top of it. So I'm going to slide this back on there. I'm so excited to have this. I read Frankenstein for the first time this year and really, really liked it. Caleb and I actually saw our local theater's production of it during October and it was so fun. I have really fond memories with this story. So I'm really excited to have such a stunning addition. Then Darian also got me The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead, which I'm really excited about. What I know about this story is that it involves a main character who she and another friend like escaped a cult. And then years later, she finds out that that other girl was killed via like some podcaster and she had thought that like, you know, the past was the past, but she slowly starts to realize that the past is very much alive and it's very dangerous. It says, in a world built for men to rule it, both inside the cult and outside of it, is justice even possible? And if so, how far will Shay go to get it? Like all thrillers, I hear mixed things about it. I feel like I did enjoy In My Dreams I Hold a Knife enough. Like I have my issues with that book, don't get me wrong, but I feel like I liked her writing and I would be excited to try this out. And I just love book covers with hands on them. I love it. So again, thank you so much, Darian, for these two books. Then one of my patrons, Carrie, sent me Lost in the Moment and Found by Sean and McGuire. So excited to add this to my collection of this series. It is the Wayward Children series following a child or a set of children who find these doorways to alternate realities, basically. And these places that they go to are their like perfect world. Sometimes they're like dark and macabre and sometimes they're like bright and fluffy. Each book is so different. They're all very short. Sometimes they do overlap the longer that the series has been going on. And it is so much fun. Every time I read one of these books, I have a good time. Thank you so much, Carrie, for thinking of me and sending me this book. Next, I'm so excited about this one. Jan, yes, the Jan, <laughs> sent me Ripe by Sarah Rose Etter. Seeing Jan as well as Jess read this book made me immediately need it in my hands. One was obviously intrigued by the cover. I know some people don't like, I don't know what the fear or the phobia is called, but I don't have it and I love this. <laughs> So it says, Ripe portrays one millennial woman's journey through our late capitalist hellscape and offers a brilliantly incisive look at the absurdities of modern life. From what I know, depression is very heavily talked about in this book, so definitely look up some trigger warnings. I hear it, it actually is a lot heavier than some people thought it would be, but I am so ready to be sad and hurt. I cannot wait to read this book. <laughs> Next, another one of my patrons, Shari, sent me Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. It is a ghost ship, a salvage crew, and unspeakable horrors. So this is basically, it says it right here, the ultimate haunted house story in space. Like this crew finds this deserted spacecraft. They get like the distress signal from it and they go to investigate and they see flickers of movement through like the windows, I think. Things written in blood on the walls and a lot of wild things. I love a haunted house story. The fact that it is haunted house in space, like if it's done well, it could really do it for me. So I'm really excited to give this a shot. Thank you so much, Shari. Next, it was so cute. I don't know if she'll watch this video because she isn't really on the internet too much anymore, but Casey sent me Briefly A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens. I just really loved this cover, full disclosure. It was kind of a cover buy. <laughs> I don't know if I ever even read the synopsis before putting it on my wish list, but it says in 1473, 14 year old Blanca dies in a hilltop monastery in Mallorca. And then nearly 400 years later, when some people arrive in this village, Blanca is still there. A spirited, funny, righteous ghost. She's been hanging around the monastery since her accidental death, spying on the monks and the townspeople and keeping track of her descendants. She watches the townspeople reflecting on desire, artistry, and the circumstances of her own death. Charming, original, and emotionally moving, the unconventional love triangle between her, George, and Chopin, Chopin emerges as a gorgeous, surprising exploration of life after death. Like, oh, I 
<laughs> I actually kind of love that a lot. Like I'm really thankful for you, Casey, for sending this to me. That sounds so fun. I'm really excited about it. Next, we have Heather who sent me The Woman Could Fly by Megan Giddings. This is the author of Lakewood, which is another book that I really want to read. I've heard really good things about it. And I know that Heather absolutely loved this book and obviously she picked it for me. So I'm really excited about it. It is a piercing social commentary reminiscent of Shirley Jackson and Octavia Butler about the unbreakable bond between a young woman and her mysterious mother. It explores the limits women face and the powers women have to transgress and transcend them. I love how that sounds and the fact that it is by this author makes me feel like it's still going to have sort of like a weird eerie sort of way of telling the story so I'm really intrigued. Heather also sent me this beautiful journal because she's so adorable. She knows I love stationery. She knows I love notebooks. I will add this to the collection and I can't wait to jot down some cute little notes in it. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay these are the last gifts. The rest I actually bought for myself and I thought that there was less than that, so oops. <laughs> my sister-in-law for my birthday actually got me the Nevernight series by Jay Kristoff. This has been on my Amazon wish list, I think, for probably three or four years. <laughs> I forgot that the series existed. So it was really surprising when I opened up my birthday present from her, but I really, really love these editions of the series. I don't know anything about this series. I, I remember putting it on my wish list and thinking like, oh, people like this series, so it must be good. <laughs> and I know that some people have talked about some problematic elements within this series. So when I do get to it, I will read it with eyes open. But I really do love how these look. And I was really excited that she got this for me. So thank you. I don't know if you're watching, but thank you. <laughs> okay, then the rest are just for me, to me. Love me. <laughs> okay, listen. <laughs> On my actual birthday, well, actually the day after my birthday, because <laughs> the day of my birthday, I was getting my hair done for literally like seven hours. <laughs> I did like the hair roulette challenge, so we had no idea how long it was going to take, and it actually took literally all day. So we were planning on going to a bunch of local indie bookstores after my hair appointment, but everything was closed by that time. <laughs> So the day after my birthday, we ended up going to my favorite one in the city, Tomorrow Bookstore, which this short little stack of three is from them, but also the an another bigger stack is also from them. <laughs> but these three I specifically got for myself on my birthday. First one is Do Your Worst by Rosie Dannon. I adore this cover and I love how this sounds. I feel like this is going to be like a perfect romance for me. I just like, like, look at it. It's so cute. It says, sparks fly when an occult expert and a disgraced archeologist become enemies with benefits in the steamy romance. Riley is the occult expert and Clark is the archeologist and Riley was hired to break this curse on this famous Scottish castle. And I don't know if Clark like is living there or is also working in this castle, but he wants her gone. He, he wants nothing to do with her. Hello? I was filming, what's up? Filming? Yeah, are you okay? <laughs> you just wanted to say hi. Sorry, Caleb called. Um, very excited about this title. Can't wait to pick it up. <laughs> Then I also got Monstrillo by Gerardo Simano Cordova. Look at this creepy little cover, it's so cool. And look at how cool these bookmarks are. Like, hello. On this side it says, the word is mightier than the sword. I love it so much. So this book was for sure on the long list of Goodreads Choice Awards for horror this year. And it says, after her son Santiago dies, Magos carves out a piece of his lung to save for herself. Acting on fierce maternal instinct and the dubious logic of an old folk tale, she nurtures the lung until it gains sentience, growing into the, the carnivorous little Monstrilio she keeps hidden within the walls of her decaying childhood home in Mexico City. Eventually, Monstrilio begins to resemble Santiago as he once was, but despite the family's best efforts to turn the monster they created into a man, Monstrilio's innate impulses threaten to destroy his fragile second chance at life. What got me is that it says it's like a thought-provoking meditation on grief, acceptance, and the monstrous side of love. Like, I love everything about how this sounds. And I'll say this again for another book later, but whenever a book talks about grief, that's like just just one of the topics that I just, I really do love to read about. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a therapy, <laughs> but I'm really excited about this. Then this one was also on the long list of Goodreads Choice Awards. I don't know if either of them made it to the short list, but regardless, these were titles that I really wanted to get to this year. And this one is Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang. And this one is about our narrator who can play the piano really well, but because her parents got in an accident, she has to leave her future as like a pianist to work at a high-end beauty and wellness shop in New York City. The store is known for its remarkable products and procedures from remoras that suck out the cheap Botox to eyelash extensions made of spider silk, and our narrator becomes transfixed by Helen, the niece of the store's charismatic owner. All the while, our narrator is plied with products that slim her thighs, smooth her skin, and lighten her hair, but beneath these creams and tinctures lies something sinister. I just recently read Rouge by Mona Awad, and it kind of sounds a little bit similar, like it's going to touch on the topics of the beauty industry, what we will do to have like the perfect complexion, and you know, stay young, look young, whatever you want 
want to call it. And I really loved Rouge, so I'm really hoping that I end up really liking this one too. The cover is just transfixing. I really love it. We're gonna continue with books that I got from the same local indie bookstore. <laughs> these two in particular though were on a cart that was free, so I didn't pay for these, so they don't even count for, like financially. <laughs> this one I haven't heard of, but my friend who owns the store pointed it out to me because I told her I love like psychological horror. And it looks super creepy. <laughs> it's called Starve Acre by Andrew Michael Hurley. It looks very spooky. And this is where the word grief comes into play again. It says it's a devastating story about the way in which grief splits the world in two and how in searching for hope we can so easily unearth horror. It's about Richard and Juliet, their son Ewen died suddenly at the age of five and now Starve Acre, their house by the moors, was to be full of life but now it is a haunted place. Convinced Ewen still lives there in some form, Juliet seeks the help of the Beacons, a seemingly benevolent group of occultists and Richard tries to keep the boy out of his mind. He has turned his attention to the field opposite of the house where he patiently digs the barren dirt in search of a legendary oak tree. But as they delve further into their grief, both uncover more than they set out to. I'm really surprised that I haven't heard of this before. I wonder when it was, it was published in 2019. I don't know, like surface level, it sounds like the perfect kind of psychological horror that I really enjoy. So I'm really excited that I got it, especially for free. I'll take it. <laughs> and then I got My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. I have not successfully read a book by Stephen Graham Jones yet, not for lack of trying. And I know that I've seen some mixed reviews on this one, but I also know that it's a slasher and I actually really like slashers. So especially since it was a free book, I 100% jumped on it and I am excited to add it to my home library. <laughs> okay, next I got purely because I saw that Jan really loved this book recently and it is A History of Fear by Luke Dumas. I've had it on my wish list for a while, but I haven't really heard a lot of people talk about it. And then I saw that Jan loved it. It says, Grayson Hale, the most infamous murderer in Scotland, claimed the devil made him slaughter his classmate. When Grayson is found hanged in his prison cell, officers uncover a handwritten manuscript that might answer the question on everyone's mind. Was he a lunatic or has he been telling the truth all along? Unnervingly, Grayson doesn't fit the bill of a killer. He's an acerbic young atheist, newly enrolled at the University of Edinburgh. In need of cash, he agrees to ghostwrite a book for a mysterious stranger, never expecting the project to reawaken his sa Satan phobia, sat Satanophobia, a condition that causes him to believe that the devil is after him. As he struggles to disentangle fact from fear, Grayson's world is turned upside down after events force him to confront his growing suspicion that his employer is the one he has feared all this time. So I wonder if we'll go back and forth between like present day and then like information from the manuscript that was found. Because if that's the case, that's exactly the structure of story that makes me propel forward in reading every single time. Mm. Paul Tremblay says, it's a disorienting, creepy, paranoia inducing, a reimagining of the devil made me do it tale. I love it. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> Okay, this one was actually one that I went into the bookstore looking for the other day. And of course it was sitting there. It is Chain Gang All-Stars by Nana Kwame Eje Brenya. I don't read a ton of sci-fi, so I didn't really pay attention to it a whole lot, but then I heard what it's about recently and I can't get it out of my head. I had to go purchase it because I will be reading it soon. It is about two top women gladiators fighting for their freedom within a depraved private prison system, not so far removed from America's own. That's all I know about it. That's all I kind of want to know about it going into it. I've heard phenomenal phenomenal things about this story. And I can imagine some of the topics and conversations that it will discuss. And I'm so excited to read all about it. Then the last book that I bought myself at the independent bookstore is one of Julia's, my friend that's the bookseller, one of her favorite books this year. And it is Blackouts by Justin Torres. I love this cover. This little hyena right here, I love it so much. And I wanna do more research on what this book is about because it says that it uses fiction to see through the inventions of history and narrative. So I wanna know what is actually like based on a true story and what parts of this are like entirely fiction before I fully go into it because I do know that it's surrounding the idea either some sort of medical or literature study like back in the day where these people saw homosexuality as something that could be cured or figured out and I believe that we're following two people who are either in the studies or were closely involved or something like that and the book itself has photographs as well as pages of blackout poetry and Julia was just praising it so much and that's all I needed I'm really excited to jump into this. Okay, next I have four books from Barnes and Noble. <laughs> also on my birthday weekend, I bought these for myself. So happy birthday to me. <laughs> the first one is The Saturday Night Ghost Club by Craig Davidson. This one is just so cute. It sounds like such a fun, cozy time. It's set in 1980s Niagara Falls, and it's an irresistible coming of age story about a group of misfit teens who spend an unforgettable summer investigating local ghost stories and urban legends. It's so short, and that little synopsis is literally all I needed. Like I can picture myself picking this up if I just wanted a quick cozy read. That tied in with the art style. I 
just, I love it so much. <laughs> then I also got Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. This is her young adult romance debut. I haven't read from Allie Hazelwood yet. I know that seems like a crime, but this one sounds really cute and it's about chess and I actually really like chess. Contrary to my own belief, I never wanna play because it stresses me out. But, like I really like it. It doesn't make sense. Don't try to make it make sense. But this is a rivals to lovers romance involving chess. And it sounds like it's going to involve a lot of like familial drama within the two characters. And I'm excited to potentially make this my first Ellie Hazelwood. I know that people might yell at me for that, but that's okay. We all start somewhere. <laughs> then I got a book that I've actually been really anticipating and it is Champion of Fate by Kendare Blake. I really got to get that sticker off immediately. <laughs> but this is the first of a series and it says behind every great hero is an Aristine. And it says Aristine are mythical female warriors, part of a legendary order. Though heroes might be immortalized in stories, it's the Aristine who guide them to victory. They are the hero makers. Ever since she was an orphan taken in by the order, Reed has wanted to be an Aristine. Now, as an initiate, just one challenge stands in her way. She must shepherd her first hero to glory on the battlefield. Succeed and Reed will take her place beside her sisters, fail and she'll be cast from the only home she's ever known. Nothing is going to stop Reed until she meets her hero. Hestian is a fiery and infuriating, but what begins an alliance becomes more, and as secrets of the order come to light, Reed begins to understand what becoming an Aristine may truly cost. Battle looming, she must choose the order and the life she had planned or Hestia and the one she never expected. I love the idea of these female warriors. I love how the conflict sounds. I really think that this could be a winner for me. And plus, I just, I love the cover as well. It has a lot going for it. <laughs> and then this last one, I was told specifically multiple times that I should read this book, that I would like it. And I've been very hesitant because I have not been sure if I would or not. But one of my patrons, I think it was Erica, specifically told me, no, I think that you'd like it. And it was like one, the, the final time that I heard it, I was like, okay, Okay, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> And it is Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. And I really wanted the Rainbow Barnes and Noble edition. I mean, it's just, it's cuter. <laughs> but this book won the Pulitzer Prize this year. Must be good, right? But this one is a story of a boy demon born to a teenage single mother in a single wide trailer with no assets beyond his dead father's good looks, copper colored hair, caustic wit, and a fierce talent for survival. In a plot that never pauses for breath, relayed in its own unsparing voice, Demon braves the modern perils of foster care, child labor, derelict schools, athletic success, addiction, disastrous loves, and crushing losses. Through all of it, he reckons with his own invisibility in a popular culture where even the superheroes have abandoned rural people in favor of cities. The vibes I get from this are kind of similar to the Goldfinch in a way, like you follow a character through their entire life, you really get to know them, and I loved the Goldfinch. So I feel like I could feel similarly about this story, and it sounds like it's going to cover like a lot of heavy topics, which goes perfectly with that type of story. So I'm listening. I bought it. Here it is. We're gonna do it. And honestly, I think there are some other books within these bookshelves that I've gotten since my last book haul, but I don't know which ones they are. So we're just gonna start here and now I know where to start next time. <laughs> so that is all I have for you today. I'm going to spend some time and put these up on my shelves, get my shelves ready for a little bookshelf tour, which is coming next. So thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit today. If you are still watching and don't know what else to say, leave me the lightning bolt emoji down below in the comments. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I always appreciate your support. I'll see you so soon in the next one. In the meantime, be kind to one another and happy reading. Bye!